So, we got another one coming at you. This time, it's a kettle that doesn't stop boiling and then eventually trips the GFCI every time. So, my guess is that the bimetallic strip in here, broken or not functioning, maybe it's dirty, uh, maybe there's something in there, maybe it's, maybe it's nothing. We'll find out. So to get into this thing, I'm going to need a weird security bit. I hate, why do companies do this? Like, are, they, are they really worried about being sued? I assume that's it. Like, I, it's kind of an unnecessary. They only used one. So I think right up with there with being annoying, like security screws are annoying, is using several different types of screws at the same step. Like this is step one in opening or you know, step final in closing this. And some poor factory workers out there doing twosie onesie instead of just three of a kind. I wonder how much it costs them to implement and how much they've saved. Like really, like what is the business decision between one security bit? Okay, so we got stuff flapping in the breeze. I think those spacers all belong on here. And I'm pretty sure that's what that's for. So this here would be the cutoff switch. These are the leads to the heating element. This goes up to the power button up top. And that's our ground lead. So positive, negative, we come through the switch. From the switch into the heating element, out of the heating element. Oh, what is that? Oh, okay. This wire, I think, is in parallel with the heating element. Probably going up to a light in the handle. Let's get that. Let's get this open. How does this come apart? Great. That's my favorite. Okay, so there are screws tucked in here. So I probably have to pinch that, yeah. Pinch that, take the lid off. And then, uh, yeah, the screwdriver's way too big. Gonna get a smaller screwdriver. And then kinda. So with these screws out, I'm pretty sure the handle will lift off. And then once I can get inside the handle, I can start to figure out whether it's this push button uh, or something else. I'm gonna start poking around with the multimeter, trying to figure out if we have continuity or shorts in areas that I don't think we should. Uh, and then besides like taking a blowtorch to the bottom of this vessel here, boiling maybe some boiling water into it. I'm not really sure how to go about checking this thermal switch. So now that it's all open, 
get a good look at it. And yeah, okay, so there are those leads that I saw earlier. That just goes to a little neon tube or an incandescent. Don't know what that is actually. But uh, we've definitely gotten some water in here, which is not a good thing. This is all mechanical, no electrical action there. So I'm gonna actually kind of close it up a little bit, throw a bit of water in here and do some danger uh, by testing. So give me a second, I'm gonna get some water. I'll be right back. Okay, so got like two cups of tap water in there. So we are gonna pick this bad boy up and place it on there. So the light is on. This uh, looks like a neon tube, actually. Uh, because the water's in there, I can't really show you, but I believe the push button is in here, and if I push it, the light doesn't change. So if I were to hazard a guess, it's the push button that's stored inside of this section that's defective. So instead of letting this pop my bar, I'm, uh, I'm gonna pour the water out and disconnect it and check this switch for continuity and see if we can't get this part of it working or replaced, heck, even a little flip switch or a push button or something inside of here might work. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we're gonna lift this button out and take this spring and set it aside. I use an ice cube tray to keep track of parts. Um, so like, unfortunately I didn't start using this right from the beginning, but going forwards, uh, the way I use this thing is all of my little spots are numbered. So in step one, I used that bit and I grabbed this screw and this post came off with it. And then in the next step, those ones came through. So realistically, this actually goes in step two, or maybe even step three, but this is not an iPhone or something so complicated that I'm going to be confusing which pieces go where. Um, and when the screws are as big as this, it's a little bit harder to lose them. Uh, this comes from a time when I used to fix iPhones in high school. Oh, maybe after that, but I was definitely fixing phones at that time. All right, I'm gonna have to use pliers probably to get this to I want to be careful not to strip anything out so by pushing really firmly with my thumb and using the pliers to grip it and use their long handle as a big lever um, I'm able to get them out without risking damaging them holy really did not want to let go. You know what, let's uh, take these screws out too while we're in here. this okay looks like it's actually I'm just noticing now there's kind of a bit of adhesive or something so I don't know if that's just waterproofing that oh yeah it seems like it was just some waterproofing that is no longer functional okay so this is supposed to go in and actuate this button but this okay so this is a second thermal cutoff switch is this maybe sensing the temperature of the steam 
I think that's what's happening with this machine is there's a thermal switch here as well as oh, this water is going to spill as well as a thermal switch here and if I already guessed they both are closed we'll test that just real quick so on first touch Okay, so that's a closed contact, or open, or I really. So ground connects up here. So let's see if I can even. Hmm. So either there's so much corrosion there. They can't get contact. Maybe we can go this way. Okay, so that's open. Is that like a reset? Is that supposed to pop out maybe, that little black plunger? I might have to activate my Google Foo and do a bit of research because unfortunately I actually don't know what I'm looking at right here. Like, I can understand that this red button is supposed to press forward and probably reset whatever this is. Like, I assume this plunger is supposed to be out. And it being out breaks the connection. Um, like, for example, this latches in, so when you click it in, it closes the connection. And then once it gets hot, either a bimetallic strip or some other element here pops that button back out once it's come to temperature and that'll do two things that'll shut the kettle off when it's hot and it'll prevent the kettle turning back on if it is just finished running and this is still you know above its temperature i'm gonna do a bit of googling and see if i can't find these but i think this is where the video ends um fundamentally the kettle still works but because it never shuts off the resistance kind of runs away and it pops the GFI every time. Hmm. If anybody knows what's up or what this part is called or where to find one, I realize it's probably not worth fixing this $15 kettle, um, but I like to repair stuff. I like diverting stuff from the waste stream and if I can get a few more months or years of use out of something or give it to somebody who can use it, and save them from spending money, creating waste, blah, 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 hippie baloney. Um, I'm about it. So.